Let's go to Eric in Salt Lake City. Hey, Eric, what's going on, brother? Hey, John, thanks for taking my call, man. It's, uh, I admit it's been probably the toughest week and a half of my life, so I'm grateful to be here. You bet, man. Tell me about it. What's going on, dude? I, uh, I was recently surprised by my wife, and I, uh, she served me divorce papers. Uh, oh, man. Week, uh, not this last Sunday, but the week prior. And uh, Completely, Complete surprise? And- well, it's surprising that I, I I knew we were having some tough times, uh, especially this last year, year and a half. Hmm. Uh, but I, uh, but there was never a conversation had of that she was reaching that point, and we had just begun, you know, about two weeks prior, going working with a therapist on some of this stuff, and mm-hmm. so I, I I was really hopeful and excited about that process and looking forward to that, and so the, the I guess the timing was surprising for me. Man, sorry. That's heartbreaking. Y'all got little ones? Uh, we do not. Okay. We, it's just the two of us. How long uh, have we've been, been married 11 years. 11, 11, 11 years, years. man. Hmm. So what's the last couple of weeks been like for you? Obviously, it's been hell, man. What's it, what's it been like? I feel like, you know, my heart's been ripped out of my chest, man. I, I, I do not want this divorce to happen. She is my everything, the center of my universe even though I don't always act like it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's, it's my, I'm just clinging, grasping for some, some way to try and make sense of everything. And it's, it's unfortunate that I have family who are close that I, that it's carrying me right now, holding me up. Have you talked uh, to her? A, a, a little bit. It's been limited. Okay. Uh, I've had a couple conversations with her, mostly logistical stuff, but we did have a chance to meet together briefly with, the. Uh, you know, church leader, for example. How but, is that? Uh, is she done, 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 done? Her words were, well, the time she served papers, she said she was done, done, done. Mm-hmm. Uh, during that uh, meeting with my, our ecclesiastical leader, I asked her for the opportunity just to try working out through that process with a therapist, and she didn't actually give me an answer at that point. And so uh, the answer is I'm not sure. I'm getting some mixed signals. Yeah, I I know in these kind of moments, especially as you're walking through just an onslaught of grief, um, you're going to read the signals that best fit the hole in your heart. And um, I would let the divorce papers that she served you ring loud and clear. Obviously, don't, you know, don't give up if that if you want to stay married and continue to be kind and treat her with dignity and respect and love that, of course, you will. Um but also don't imagine a scenario that may not be real, right? Yeah. Would she meet with you one-on-one at a coffee shop? Uh, you know, I don't know if she would today, but I think if, I, I do believe that she would, we, we can get to that point before all this officially completes. Yeah, I think she would. Is that a, is that mythological thinking or fantasy thinking? Or is, um, like if she would meet with you today, what, what would happen between now and a few weeks from now that would change that? During some of our logistical conversations we've had, I say logistical meaning, you know, budget things and, and process. Right. She, she, she's showing signs, I think, of softening. Okay. Uh, you know, not, not, not big grand conversations. And, and a couple of days ago, she even gave me a hug uh, because of something going on. And just little, I'd, I'd like to think that that would that she would meet with me to have a conversation like that. Okay. Uh, but, but I admit, I, I also accept that I'm an emotional, ro- I'm an emotional roller coaster. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and, and, and hear, hear me say, um, what I don't want to do is, is yeah, you're going to look for every sign that this thing may still have a heartbeat. Right. And yep. sometimes we get our signals crossed there because she may be finally breathing for the first time. She may be thinking about this for one year, two years, three years, and she finally may be exhaling for the first time in years. And so a hug for her may be a sense of finality. And for you, it may feel like, oh, so you're telling me there's a chance, right? So um, <laughs> you, can, you can cross each other in the night. Um, that's why for your soul, and I, we haven't even got to the question, and I still don't even know why you called, but um, I just started talking, but... For your soul, sitting down and saying, can we meet and be not beating around the bush? I think there's still some, be very clear. Um, you file papers and 
have you had a, we've had some, a couple of weeks now to be working on logistics. Is there a chance that we don't go through with this? And mm-hmm. let her speak very clearly and with the period at the end of that sentence. Otherwise, you're it, it's going to be this hanging on weird thing, right? It's like being in love with somebody who's on life support and every day is an up day and a down day. It's going to feel like this roller coaster and you've got an opportunity to cut through the middle of it. And if she won't meet with you, that's a great answer, right? Yep. That's a firm decision yep. answer. But I think if, if your marriage is going to make it um, – having a conversation at the beginning or not the beginning, but here at the beginning of the end, if you will, um, is, is a good way to get some clarity, but I just cut you off, man. So how how can I help today, man? I'm so sorry you're going through this. I appreciate it, John. And I, between us, I am praying my guts out and working hard to make sure that, uh, if there is a way of salvaging it, that that's my first priority. But my, the question I was calling about was my, I've been with my best friend and closest intimate partner, 11 years. Hmm. And, and the thing I fear the most is being alone again when all this is over yeah. and, 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 and being entirely uh, on my own, you know, economically, spiritually, we're okay. We're a bit, you know, we've, we've been debt free Dave Ramsey fans for a long, long time. Hmm. And we've set up a, a really amazing life, but just that thought of being alone without, without her in my world, just, terrifies me. How, how, so the question is, how do I go about finding a sense of normalcy and learning to heal? And, and, and basically, how do I continue my life after uh, such a long time of, of being a partner with somebody and yeah. not having that anymore? That's a great question. Um, I think the most important thing to do is to mourn this like a death. We hear about divorce all the time. And it's so common that we forget how brutal and painful and gut-wrenching it is for a thousand different reasons. You're in a fortunate situation where your, your finances are fine. You know what I mean? There's not kids involved. It's, and I say you're fortunate. There's, there's, there's less layers here. And you're just feeling the emotional, oh, my gosh, I'm going to wake up. and I'm going to come home to an empty house foreseeably, you know, for the next – who, right? I'm, I'm going to come up to an empty house. Right? Yep. And so it's owning the fact that this is common and everybody talks about it. And we all have friends whose parents got divorced. You got to mourn this like a death. Right. And so um, this is not a, an event. This is a process. And healing is going to look different for everybody. And it's going to look different in different seasons for different people. But for you, man, knowing I got to honor this thing because it's going to come over me like, I'm, I'm out in the middle of the ocean, right? Yeah. Um, grief will wave over you and it will feel like I can't breathe and I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to drown. And you're not, you're not, it's going to feel like it. Um, and then you're going to have all sorts of the shame and the guilt and the, you know what I mean? And the failure and all the stuff you're going to feel as you navigate through this. And then you're going to get really pissed off. You're going to be angry and you're going to want to go rage. All those things are going to be normal part of this grieving process. Um, but it's knowing I'm in this for a season. This isn't something I'm going to do in a couple of weeks and I'm going to be up and at them. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And at the same time, you're going to have to be up and at them. You're going to have to eat. You're going to have to sleep. You're going to have to take care of your body. You're going to have to be around other people, right? Um, do you have some people that are going to walk through this with you? Do you have a group of guys that are ride or die that you've had for a while in your life? They're going to be able to come over at 2 a.m. and bring Taco Bell and who are also going to come over at 2 a.m. and make sure you're not having your fifth helping a taco, but right. You have a group of guys going to walk through you with this. You know, I do, but it's complicated. She and I have been married so long. Her friends are my friends. My friends are hers. Yeah, And it, and it's, I'm trying so hard to respect, you know, the boundaries and, and, and I guess what my fear is, is that by bringing people in, that I'll be betraying her trust because I, I certainly have no intention of throwing her under the bus sure. you know, for anybody. So, and, and in those relationships, how, why would you be betraying her trust? Tell me about that. Well, uh, she, she's had a, a difficult time getting friends over the years and, and, and uh, my closest friends because they're around are the only real friends she has in her world. Sure. And, and what I don't want to happen is for her to feel like, uh, the world is gathered against her. So Eric, she, you love this woman and I take it that she's a good human being and she made a grown up decision. Yes. Right. And my hope is that she made a grown up decision. She thought it all the way through from start to finish. And my hope is that 
when she held those papers and saw you, she thought, whoa, 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 whoa. Probably not. Probably not. Um, but you can't not have people in your life, especially people who have been your friends for years and years and years, your go-to people. You can't choose to isolate yourself in this moment because of some things that maybe it might be this might be, that's the wrong way to think about it. She's made up grown up decisions. She's going to have to reach out to her community. You're going to have to reach out to yours. And if they happen to overlap, they happen to overlap. Right. But what I'm telling you is you cannot do this by yourself. Yep. Right. You can't. You got to be really intentional about your life. Can I ask you a hard question? I welcome it. Go for it. Uh, what part of this do you got to own? I have a lot to own, John. Tell me about it. Um, oh man, what? That's that's a big question, my friend. It's uh, rattle them off. You got them. You've been thinking about them for the last two months. I've been. Uh, I've had, I've really dealt with some significant depression. Uh, I've been battling, uh, battling honesty issues. Okay. And being honest with her. Um, uh, that includes a lot of empty promises. You know, a lot, she's heard a hundred times. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to admit, I'm going to, I'm going to get this taken care of this time. And mm-hmm. I meant it in the moment, but I didn't have the tools or the skills, uh, or, or, or yeah, I didn't, I didn't follow through. Okay. Uh, and probably most significantly, I think, is I'm uh, as I've been meditating lately. I, I think I've I may have been emotionally bullying her uh, unintentionally, but I feel I, I think I've been smothering her emotionally uh, for a long time. And, huh? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so. So and I and something that she's been trying to articulate, and I, I just couldn't connect the dots until I had a friend, a family member, hold my feet to the fire and walk me through it, and I had an aha moment and I realized how stupid I've been. Hmm. So assuming this is over, there's two choices and I I hate to bifurcate the world like this, but I'm going to, you got two choices. You can choose to sit in and stew in and try to rewrite sentences of the past with the period at the end of them, which does nobody any good. Or, You can take this as the greatest sign of your life that now I'm going to deal with me. That I'm worth not not living a life of depression under those heavy, heavy blankets. I'm going to go get healing. That I'm going to learn how to connect with folks and not drag them around by their emotions and their hearts. And um, I'm also going to find out how to have peace with the guy in the mirror because that guy's worth being loved deeply, right? Yeah. And choosing to spend the next two years, five years, 10 years, not grieving this because you're going to grieve it. You're probably always going to love this woman, right? She sounds like she's pretty special. Is that, is that fair? Uh, best thing in my universe. Absolutely. Okay. So you can spend the next five, 10, 15, 20 years um, mourning this, missing her, and you probably will. And you may find love again, and you're still going to have a thing for her in your heart. You always will. But you can spend 10 or 15 years just lashing yourself, beating yourself up, um, sentencing yourself to a life of further misery. Or you can say, I'm going to be intentional about my life. I'm going to own the parts. I'm going to change my identity. I'm going to do the hard work. I'm going to go see a counselor. I've been saying I'm going to for years, and I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to start taking care of my body. I've been saying it for years. I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to be intentional about being honest with people and telling the truth for the first time in my life because I deserve that. The people who love me deserve that. And some of that is going to start as simple as uh, something cheesy that I do every day, which is a gratitude journal, which is getting an index card saying, here's what I can control today, right? It's getting teeny tiny little bits of myself back. And it's a practice and you're going to do really good for a month. And you're going to fall off. And you're going to get back up the next day and you're going to go again. And you're going to go again and you're going to go again. But listen, Eric, you're worth being well. You're worth not living a life under that cloud of depression and you're worth telling the truth, right? Is it, do you believe me? Absolutely. Okay. This one may be over. I hope it's not, man. I hope you'll keep in touch with me. I hope you'll reach out to her and say, can we meet just you and me? 
And if she says no, obviously you're going to treat her with respect and you're going to honor her wishes, right? If she does, you can tell her where you're at. And you can also let her know, hey, I know we said this a million times and I've never followed through. And this one's going to be different. And by the way, here is my, here's my meeting with, a, with a, I mean, my, my appointment with a therapist. Here is my this and here's my that. Um, but more importantly, not to try to win her back or to try to make sure she like, no, man, get healing for you. And then you can fully plug into somebody else, not through emotional manipulation, not through feeling manipulation, but connected to somebody of value, love somebody of value. Somebody wakes up every day trying to support somebody else. Somebody's going to be totally honest because what you say and what you feel and what you believe has value. Not because you got to try to hem haul around things. And there's no chance on planet Earth that she's blameless in this deal too, right? So she's going to have to own herself also. But this is a, a process, not an event. You got to have people and you're going to have to mourn this thing. You have to take it seriously. Don't race to move on. And on those moments when the, when the waves crash over you and you can't breathe, hang in there. Hang in there. You're not going to drown. You're going to catch your breath back. Your body's going to resurface. And you're going to have to have some people with you. And you're going to go again. And you're going to go again. And you're going to go again. So sorry you're going through this, Eric, man. Um, we'll be thinking about you. Let, let, let us know how that conversation goes. And we're going to hold out hope for you. Um, and then we're going to walk alongside you, man. So if she says no, let us know that too. And holler back after the divorce is final. And we'll walk you through day one, day 10, day 180, and we'll keep going from there. All right. I want you to reach out to somebody today and make sure you've got somebody that's going to walk with you through this. Thanks for the call, man. 